just got a question from someone. Should I eat more carbs than protein while dieting? That's the question, guys. This is not and never will be a yes or no question. It's an it depends kind of answer. It's gonna depend on, it's gonna depend on your protein needs as well as your caloric allotment. If you have a very small caloric allotment, you might not be able to have more carbs than protein. Inversely, if you have very low protein needs, but let's just say you have a high, high, high metabolism, then it sounds like you would have more carbs than protein. When we set up our macros, we set up the fats, we set up the proteins, and then we fill in the rest with carbs. I got a question about calories. Somebody watched my Nutrition 101 calories video and wasn't sure what to multiply the number by. And they're like, Matt, how do you know you're a times 1.8? Things this, guys, there are plenty of somewhat accurate calculators out there. The more information you give them, the more accurate. But no matter what, none of them are going to be actually perfectly accurate. Don't let paralysis analysis hit you guys. Seriously, just get started on some calorie intake, tracking it, weighing yourself. That way you know how to adjust. Everybody's like, am I on the right amount of calories? I have to begin perfectly. Look, it does not matter. If your maintenance is 3,000 and you accidentally do 2,800, you're going to lose a little bit of weight. Guess what? Getting on that 2800 helped you find your maintenance. You lost a little bit of weight. Add a little bit of calories. Oh man, I'm suddenly at the same weight with 3000. That's how you find the maintenance. In conclusion, the only way to find out what calories do what to your body is to simply start tracking them and weighing yourself, regardless of how many calories it is. That's it. Somebody asked me, Matt, how, how did you upload your video in HD on Instagram? That's the same question I'm asking people. I have no idea. My videos aren't in HD. They may look like it, but they're not. When you guys are dieting, there's two main inputs. How many calories per day you're consuming on average, and two, how many calories you're burning per cardio session and how many cardio sessions per week. So you're tracking your consumption, you're tracking your morning weigh-ins after you use the bathroom religiously, and you're tracking how many cardio sessions you're doing. To gain weight, make sure the weight on the scale, when you look at it on the ground, is going up over time. If it's not going up, but you want it to, increase your calories and or decrease cardio. Increase your calories based on the difference between what your weight is actually doing over the span of time and what you want your weight to actually do. If I'm maintaining weight but I want to gain about one pound a week, I would probably start by increasing calories by between 250 and 500 calories per day. This guy's been training seven days a week for about a year now and wants my opinion. What do I think about training seven days a week? Um, hmm, it depends on a lot of different things. So regardless of how many times you train per week, your training has to be something you can recover from. That's a very important part. I think however many times you train per week is great as long as you're recovering enough so that you're constantly progressing and increasing the volume and tension that you're hitting over time. Like there's no special rule that says you have to rest at least one day a week. You have to rest at least two days a week because it really depends on your workload, the intensities you're using and so on. That said, if you find yourself training practically every day, but you're not progressing, you're not getting stronger, you're not increasing the volume you're using, then maybe try a rest. All right guys, so testosterone boosters generally are absolute wastes of money. Uh, pretty much anything that actually does boost your testosterone is gonna come with side effects and it's probably illegal. Hey, for anyone who, who snaps me, Matt, can you give me some tips on how to lose fat or gain muscle? My, my tip is to watch my snaps, my YouTube videos, my Instagram posts. Someone this is like my third take of this video because I've been redoing it like every couple of days or whatever just to make it faster and more you know, brief. But here's the wall behind me. I don't know if it's flipped or not, but. Got asked the question, Matt, what's your advice for teen bodybuilding? No lie and not a sellout. Buy the pyramids at this link. It will save you. Buy those eBooks. It'll give you the knowledge that I basically have now after like 10 years of lifting. Ebooks will give you the key fundamentals of training and nutrition. From there, practice perfect, awesome, great form. Respect. Guys, I try my best to lead by example. If you watch my videos, that's generally a very good example of proper form. Everything I do is generally proper. And last but not least, just focus on progress. Focus on progression, getting stronger over time, doing some more reps over time, etc. Like in so many areas of life, it's all about having that goal and you have to constantly think about it and strive towards it and all that stuff, right? But in bodybuilding, everyone has it wrong because we imagine this physique based off of other people's physiques, like me, for example, and you like strive towards that in your
This is another reason why so many people hop on gear, not that it's necessarily a bad thing. It's because they have these crazy expectations. Instead, perfect the craft, perfect the squat, perfect the flat dumbbell bench press, perfect every fucking movement in the gym. From there, progress. No one gives a shit. It doesn't matter how strong or how developed you think you'll become or want to become. It doesn't matter. All you really need to focus on is progression of the weights lifted from workout to workout. That is it. Make sure you're hitting every single muscle around twice a week, the ones that you want to grow with an exercise that actually hits that muscle. And then from there, progress. Good luck. Last but not least, it's going to take you guys years. I can't even explain how many people look at me and just think drugs right off the bat. They don't know I've been training for 10 years. As long as your genetics are average or better, if you train smarter, more consistent, and for more years than 99% of other people, you're going to be more jacked.